Fred, you can start. Hello and welcome to the Reykjavik Grapevines newscast. My name is Valdo Grætisvon. I'm an editor in chief at the Reykjavik Grapevine. This year is my chief of morale officers and he's the best at it, in my opinion. Uh, it's a bit windy outside. It's very chill, uh, chilly. It's like uh, three degrees outside or something. But with the sun, it's, it's bearable. Uh, that's Iceland for you. It's snowing in the, in the north. So if you're traveling in Iceland right now and you're watching this, uh, it's, uh, I think it's 9th of May. I have no idea though, uh, then uh, keep in mind, keep your eyes on the, on the road conditions, uh, especially the weather forecast, uh, but besides that, uh, you should be fine. Uh, and AMA, ask me anything, it's tomorrow. Uh, we are going to uh, meet you, those that want to meet you and want to meet us, uh, and we want to talk about anything and nothing, and, and it's always very fun. So, if you want to join us, if you're new and you, you've been thinking about it and you've been dreaming about meeting me and Antti and Josie or, or even Pauline, she's always around, uh, then you can actually join in our High Five Club. Uh, I think it's uh, the, like the top two tiers. Uh, it, will, uh, it will automatically give you access to it. We will send you a link and everything and it will be wonderful. Uh, and tours, of course. Uh, we're doing tours. Uh, me and Bjartmar and Pauline, we go around the city try to explain what's, what all this is about, basically. What, what's, the, what's the deal with Icelanders and why are we so weird uh, or confusing or lacking of principle or just contradictive in, in every possible way. Uh, and uh, if you don't like that, uh, you can, can always just uh, like uh, order a bus fare from the Keflavik International Airport to, to Reykjavik. So enough of that. Uh, we're going to go into news. Uh, we have Pussy Riot. Uh, actually, uh, like a elaborated uh, flight from Russia. Uh, we have Alexios, of course. Our epidemiologist is uh, is is quitting, actually, uh, and uh, and Eurovision, of course. So let's go for it. So, uh, the first news I want to tell you about is about Ragnar Kjartansson. Uh, I know it's perhaps hard to understand what I'm saying, especially when I'm talking with Icelandic accent, but uh, Ragnar Kjartansson is an international uh, visual artist in Iceland. One of the absolute... Uh, he's like a megastar when it comes to everything in Iceland uh, in visual arts. I don't know if you've seen his shows, but they are always like hilarious, uh, humane, uh, funny, sad and there are so many things at the same time. Uh, what's most interesting about this though is that he actually have had a show in uh, Russia just before the invasion into, into Ukraine where uh, the Russians have attacked of course and it's a full-blown invasion. Uh, I don't care about the politics, it is, it is what it is. Uh, and the thing is he had this hilarious show about like he was reenacting, uh, it was like a soap opera all in Russia. I think it was uh, like Dallas or something like that. Uh, and uh, the idea was basically to show uh, the trans transformation from a communist state like Soviet Union into the modern Russia. But the moment they invaded, uh, Ragnar Kjartansson said immediately, this is not Russia anymore, this is some kind of a full-blown fascist state. So he pulled off, uh, he took the, the show, uh, down basically, and he he went uh, and he basically uh, left Moscow where he was. So this is how his connections. This just happened a few months ago. Uh, the thing is, of course, that uh, oh, there's a there is a hole in the. Uh, uh, we actually have a lot of frisbee discs, but. <laughs> This one is getting very tired. So that, don't go sending us tons of them. We only need one, <laughs> keep in mind. And we try to use them because we, we love using stuff. So, but here's the thing. Uh, Ragnar Kjartasson, he met these uh, wonderful ladies in Pussy Riot. Uh, if you have been uh, watching news at all past years, uh, you probably know who Pussy Riot is. They are punk band activist and a brilliant uh, uh, brilliant, basically, social commentators when it comes to the Russian, whatever it is, I won't say fascist state, but uh, it definitely feels like it. Uh, but they, like one of these women, her name is, 
Maria, Maria Aljokina. I have no idea if this is uh, the correct uh, or not. Let's go here. Uh, and she actually fled from Russia uh, to Lithuania with the help of Ragnar Kertasol. And what, the, what Ragnar did actually is that he asked, uh, he asked some unnamed European state uh, about like a travel document. And this happened after uh, Maria tried to go to Lithuania, but she was actually evacuated back because she, she was wanted by the Russian government because she knew that she was going to be uh, jailed because uh, a protest that she uh, participated in. Now, here you can see, actually, the, this is the Russian embassy here. You can see what they write here, liars. And just for them to understand, there's also in Kirillik right here. Uh, and also, uh, the Pussy Riot was actually here earlier this week protesting uh, the wars outside here with a performance art where they were all, all in blood and so on. Uh, it hit the news, but nobody really realized who they were. But uh, a few days later, of course, some uh, recognized them. Uh, and we found out that uh, Ragnar Kertesson had been helping them. And New York Times, they actually picked up the story and they told this incredible story about Maria uh, leaving Russia. And she actually, where she lives, or lived in Moscow, she uh, disguised as a, like a food delivery person uh, just to avoid the detection of the police or, or whoever was actually watching her home. And there were some people watching her home. So just like still not a fascist state, but it definitely feels like it, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, she went all the way to Li Lithuania from Belarus, uh, through Belarus. Uh, but the Lithuanian porters, they said, you have to go back. Uh, and they were very harsh about it. So she contacted Ragnar. Ragnar contacted this unnamed European state. Uh, and they gave her travel documentation, which allowed her actually to travel through Lithuania and there to Reykjavik, where she is now with her friends. And they're in Pussy Riot. And they're actually uh, preparing a tour around Europe. <coughs> uh, and uh, where they're, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that where they are going to criticize the, 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 the Russian, not fascism government, but it feels like it, remember. Uh, so the thing is that uh, Ragnar Kertesson haven't been, uh, he doesn't want to tell who was this unnamed European state, but here's the truth. Uh, the thing is he is very involved, well, not involved, but he is, he, he have always been uh, in the left green party in Iceland. Uh, the left green party, they, they have the prime minister in Iceland, which is Katrin Jakobsdóttir. Uh, I'm not saying it happened, but uh, it definitely feels like he could have uh, given her a call and asked, like, Do you, can you give us a travel documentation? But of course, uh, Iceland is uh, not the Polpiers, not that we, as we know, but, uh, but it's interesting that this happened and that uh, an unnamed uh, European state held a pussy riot, a member of the pussy riot, to actually flee the country. So she's in Iceland, as, as well as uh, well over 900 Ukrainian um, uh, refugees uh, and of course a lot of Russians and uh, keep in mind although you're from Russia we don't Icelanders don't see them as a attacker we see uh, Vladimir Putin as a as a well not a fascist dictator but it definitely feels like it right uh, so uh, in other news uh, 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 yes the pandemic uh, the pandemic is over uh, almost uh, COVID is definitely all around, but uh, it's, I mean, it could come back. That's what everybody's saying, but we're not feeling it, not at all. In Iceland, we have, uh, I think we have gotten the herd immunity in Iceland, uh, meaning that we are, well, uh, there are no restrictions at all. We are very good in so many ways. So the chief epidemiologist, and I talked about this guy the most often of all people uh, in, new, in my newscast, and this is Thorolfur Gunnarsson. Uh, this man is an uh, older gentleman. He is, uh, he is uh, very much of a scientist. Uh, he is very like soft-spoken and, and a good man in so many ways. Uh, and he is the reason that Icelanders have been doing so well when it comes to the pandemic. Uh, although, I mean, uh, I don't know how the statistics are now, but uh, like in the, in the big beginning of the year, the Icelanders were doing was one of the few countries doing very well, uh, given that we actually had, uh, of course. We got all of the, want to go here? Should we go to the parliament? Parliament, yes. We have no idea where we're going, by the way. <laughs>
So, uh, Thorle Gunnarsson is actually resigning from his post. Uh, the reason is uh, that, uh, well, he is a little bit old. Not too old. He could be working, uh, like, uh, in a, still working. But this has been very demanding years. And he has decided to, well, enough is enough. The pandemic is almost done. So he's going to do something else. And he said, well, his wife will be very glad to have him back. You haven't seen that much of him. Uh, and not only that, he's also a pretty good musician. He's a fantastic singer, by the way. And he plays the bass. So it might be actually that he's just going to uh, go to uh, go and rehearse more on the bass and so on. But also what's interesting is that he has been keeping a diary this whole time. So it's more than likely that he will uh, write something, some book about this, uh, which is, of course, I mean, this is such a historic event that we, we need as many books as we can about it. We need to document this in so many ways. And the thing is, I love Thorolver. He is... Uh, he is one of these characters that uh, realized that Icelanders uh, needed very good information about the pandemic because they were, this was, this, it would be useless to go into restrictions if the population would not be participating. Uh, and he has been very transparent and everything. So uh, from, at least from Regia Grape and my, my point of health, uh, I just think it's, like, it's improper to literally thank the man for all the good work that he's done. Uh, and we should literally raise a statue of the man, if we can. Because if you think about it, this is the man that has saved uh, more uh, lives uh, than anyone else in the history of Iceland, at least. Uh, to, given that we were watching, uh, like in the beginning of the pandemic, we were afraid that we would lose around 200 people. Uh, but we, it's now around 100. So given that he might have saved 100 people, that's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, and elections. The elections are on Saturday. Uh, you can vote the whole day. Uh, if you're an immigrant and, and you have lived here uh, for three years and you're not from the Nordic countries, you, you can vote. Uh, if you're from the Nordic country, you can vote straight away. The second you have a social security number and you are registered in one of these uh, smaller towns. So uh, the thing about the elections, of course, is it's getting a little bit more clearer uh, what's happening here. Uh, the Independence Party is not as, uh, well, they're in trouble, but perhaps not as much problem as we thought. The Social Democrats are doing fine, uh, but they could be much stronger. So it's going to be an, like an exciting fight, at least in Reykjavik, as well as in Hafnafjörður, my hometown. Love Hafnafjörður. Uh, and uh, there we have an old leader from the Social Democrats coming back. He used to be a minister in he of health. Uh, for, for uh, well, way back, like 1990 something, uh, but he's a legend in, in Hafnafjörður, uh, and he actually has, uh, has in some ways restored the Social Democrat Party there. So Hafnafjörður might actually, uh, there, there, there's going to be a really exciting elections there. So if you live in Hafnafjörður, I know a lot of my viewers actually do, because uh, there are a lot of uh, new, uh, like, uh, it, the, the town has expanded so much past years that uh, they are like, uh, I think the, the town has doubled in size in just 20 years, at least since I was living there. Uh, and of course, Eurovision. Eurovision actually is the same night uh, as the elections, uh, which makes next Saturday possibly the biggest party day uh, of the year. Icelanders are going to go out, they're going to drink and celebrate. Uh, we got through uh, the preliminary in Eurovision. And I said this love Eurovision. I have no idea. Well, I do have, have an idea about it, but <laughs> uh, perhaps this is not the opportunity to explain it. Uh, perhaps me and Bjarne, we should have a, have a Eurovision walk tomorrow or something. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you're in town, actually, in, in Reykjavik on Saturday, and trust me, every house will be filled with music or loud news. Uh, watching the elections, watching the, the Eurovision. And the Eurovision night, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, thanks for voting us, for those that voted us, uh, because uh, the sisters, or sisturnar, they actually got through, and they sang in Icelandic. Uh, we don't do that often, actually, because Icelandic is, I'm bad, it, it sounds very weird for those that haven't heard it before. Uh, and even like, uh, like, it's like for me to listen to a Wales person, I'm just confused the whole time. <laughs> it's like the hottest language I've heard. Uh, I, I imagine the same for, for, Iceland, for Icelandic, 
But uh, yeah, what's it? Uh, what's the Eurovision if you're in Europe? Of course, even even you can probably do it if you're in the, in the US. I know a good friend of mine in the US, uh, DT Units. He will do it, of course, uh, and she she knows everything about it. If you need an expert for that, uh, and also uh, I vote for them, of course, uh, because uh, I don't know, they're they're fun, they're cute. Uh, so this is it for the newscast. Uh, my name is Valer Grettison. This is Polly somewhere, could he? Uh, and uh, remember our tours, our high five uh, thing, uh, club, uh, like and subscribe. And we have membership also. Uh, if you're in the membership group, uh, you can actually also watch the AMA and you can uh, write questions uh, as you're watching it live. Uh, and we will uh, answer them uh, as, uh, if we see them <laughs> timely. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for that watching. Oi! <laughs>